Greetings and welcome to the latest edition of the Entheogenic Evolution Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Martin, and very happy to have you with me today, where we are checking in once more with Oli over there in Europe, who has been providing ceremonial sessions uh, with individuals with what he calls Silawaska, and also he has added in some 5-MeO-DMT in the form of Sonoran Desert Toad Venom. So it's been about a year since we last spoke with Oli, and we're going to check in with him today and find out what he's been up to and how it's been working with incorporating toad medicine into his ceremonies. Before we get into that, just a couple brief announcements. One is that I wanted to remind the listeners that if you are interested in learning more about 5-MeO-DMT, uh, more than what you already learn on this podcast, obviously I have a lot of guests on this show uh, about 5-MeO-DMT, and possibly next week I'll even have another one. We have Dr. Jerry coming up from Mexico, who's going to be visiting here in Oregon, and I hope to get in an interview and podcast with him while he is here talking about his work with 5-MeO down in Mexico. But anyway, bringing me back to my point is that if you want to learn more about 5-MeO-DMT, I would just like to remind you that I myself have published a number of books which focus primarily on 5-MeO-DMT. The first would be Being Human and also The Entheological Paradigm, uh, my novel Beyond Azara, uh, All is One, which is an ebook understanding entheogens and non-duality, and of course, my recent memoir, Being Infinite. Um, so that's just a place to look if you want to learn more about 5-MeO-DMT from someone who is well experienced with it, that would be me. I invite you to check out some of my books. You can always find those at my webpage at www.martinball.net. And they're also available online at amazon.com, as Kindle books, at the iBookstore. So pretty much anywhere, just not in actual bookstores, because my work is all self-published, and most bookstores do not carry self-published books. So I invite you to check that out. Uh, this is also the portion where I normally would thank contributors to the Entheogenic Evolution podcast for helping to bring this to all of you out there in listener land. However, in the past couple months, there have been no contributors to the Entheogenic Evolution podcast, so this episode is brought to you strictly by me. If you would like to make a contribution and help pay for storage and bandwidth to help make this information available to the public, then I warmly invite you to stop by at entheogenic.podomatic.com and use the PayPal donation link that is available there. And of course, anything helps and is always appreciated. Well, those are my announcements. Let's uh, finish out this song that we're listening to right now, and then we'll get into our talk with Ollie. So I'm very pleased to welcome back to the Entheogenic Evolution Podcast, Oli, all the way over there in Europe. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you very much for having me again, Martin. Um, I'm quite good, although I have to say that um, I got some uh, depressive uh, uh, depression. It's so so-called depression the past weeks since we have been in a great on a great holiday in Asia, and when you get back to normal. Then the mind starts again, and it's uh, it it wanted to be uh, to stay in Asia, kind of, and then, yeah. So I had some you know some dark thoughts the past weeks, but um, as all things pass, all things and are time related, and they pass. I'm back. Oh well, good. <laughs> so a, a little post vacation yeah. blues then. Yes. Yeah. 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 So for the listeners, if you would. Please remind them about what it is uh, that you do. You were on the podcast, maybe it was even a year ago now. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm not even certain how long it's been, but it's certainly been a while. And we talked about your work with Silawaska. So maybe just to kind of reintroduce you to the listeners, tell us a little bit about the work that you do. Yes. Yeah, I try to keep it short. It's um, we, we had an amazing talk about the weekends we're doing in the Netherlands. We were in the beginning when we talked. We only had two weekends uh, 
um, we only did two weekends when we talked first and um, we found um, that um, it's much better to have the, the whole thing more organized and that two people should be there as a guide and what we are doing in the Netherlands is um, we have the possibility to use legally available sclerotia um, uh, yeah, mushrooms so it's a uh, um, uh, philosopher stones or um, psilocybin mexicana mostly psilocybin galindoe and the form we use uh, the form we can use freely in uh, the netherlands is the sclerotia form of the mushroom and um, we add to this mushroom um, a, a maui inhibiting plant which is a peganum hamala and that makes the experience very very strong and very intense and deep much deeper than uh, uh, usual, a typical ayahuasca brew can take you, although ayahuasca can take you very far as well, but it's just the amount you take in, the, the brew has to be cooked very strong. Yeah. And the mushrooms, the mushrooms are a bit stronger somehow, the psilocin is a bit a stronger molecule than the DMT, so um, psilocin is a very powerful um, uh, yeah, vehicle to, to get you very deep into the core, very go, uh, to, to go um, yeah, to leave the world as we know it, and um, so uh, since I uh, I have been experiment experimenting with this for a few years and found so deep wisdom from it, uh, I had the urge to share that. And um, with my dear friend Jeroen as a partner, we started the whole thing out of a kind of a let's do it thing yeah and yeah. Um, but we have but but once you start it's like with you also the work you're doing you know that everyone knows it once you start a thing and it keeps on going and you're getting popular with it then you have to to uh, get into details and to make it smoother and to make it the whole ex, uh, experience um, yeah more professional and it's really doing good to have a more professional background now as well as for us as also for the clients we have for the um, for the people participants are coming to us because um, the mind really needs to be um, feeling really really well when going into these deep realms this this um, this uh, world without the world and um, letting go is not a thing you can go you can do easily so it is really important that um, we handle the whole thing so precise and pr uh, professional that everyone feels comfortable and that is something we really um, we worked a lot on and now it's absolutely clear that uh, also Jeroen is not taking anything on the weekends also me you know we are both sober we are um, much more doing these things as um, yeah like uh, in the 60s like a like a psychotherapeutic uh, approach to the whole thing it's just we don't have a clinical setting we we don't have clinical research research uh, chemicals nothing is you know it's all natural Oops. and we are doing this in this beautiful houses and um, yeah so I, you see already I'm getting into what we enhanced so the question was what we are doing. We are doing mushroom ceremonies in the Netherlands and we are, um, yeah, that's, that's for now. I have more to, to tell, but I want to leave you the room to ask questions. Yeah. So about <laughs> how many of these sessions do you feel that you've done now in the, the year since we've last spoken? Yeah. When we spoke, the second one was over the October, uh, 2013 was over. And then we had a ceremony in January because we found we can do it every two months. And we had one in January and there we found that Jeroen has to be sober too because it was the last ceremony where he, had to, where, where he also took some uh, material. And then we had a ceremony in March, which was a, really a, a changing point for us because that was the first ceremony where Jeroen and me were totally sober and conducting the whole thing together out of a marriage, you know, kind of thing. Because um, you know that everything in, in life comes in pairs and you have, you know, uh, collaborations, duos are a thing which are really powerful because two individual individuals uh, combine their powers. And I have things he don't have and he has things I don't have. So 
on on my incarnation. So uh, we really are. Um, yeah, it was an, a, amazing how powerful that combining of our both um, uh, our full potentials uh, was um, doing was changing the whole thing. So we had an amazing ceremony in March in a very uh, in a more smaller house, but also um, since we um, in January we changed the whole thing for the first time because we got out of the apartment style houses where we have been last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are putting much more money into it and now renting houses which have an ancient um, history. Most most of the of our houses are 300 to 400 years old. So we are renting houses which are renewed, but have an ancient tradition. They are farm, old farmhouses, old frame houses, old mills, an old castle. Yeah, a little castle, a castile. Cool. We have. Yeah, it's amazing. You won't believe it, wouldn't you? You can, I mean, I guess you, you got into the Psiloaska Facebook group and maybe you've seen the pictures. It's an amazing, it's amazing places we, we, we're booking now. It costs much more, but it's really worth the, the price because um, uh, it's, th this is some, so, something which gives the people the, the feeling of a vacation and of something ancient, you know, it's like it touches the heart, it touches the, the soul and it's really, it's deep, it's amazing how the the change of the places changed the whole thing also but we had that on january also with the first time being in the castile we will return this year to the castile in november again um but uh what was what wasn't there in january was that uh i was kind of still doing the whole thing alone because you, you know when you take mushrooms and you take care of people you're not you're not 100% there, yeah, because you have your stuff going on in your mind. And that is something that Jeroen and me, we realized it and we changed it for March. And in March, we had the first ceremony, which was really, really, really intense because we could take care of the people um, much better and deeper than before. And also the group was an amazing group. They are still talking on the on the messenger groups you know we have little messenger groups which is the thing we also changed we have messenger groups from the participants where only the participants of the specific um ceremony can to, uh, can come into and they are still talking with each other it's still family they're still connected they have they met each other during the the past months uh, for festivals in the Netherlands, for a festival in Portugal, many people met. And it's amazing how these people stay connected like a family. And that is something which really was the first time happening in March. And also in March, we had the first time um, enough material to serve everyone with the toad. We will talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we will talk about that, I guess, because you're pretty interested in the whole thing, I know. And we have real toad magic since january but officially since march and it was groundbreaking what the toad can do in a group it is you i i guess you know it so i'm you know i'm talking to you as someone who knows it but someone who never experienced five methoxy dmt who never experienced toad magic who can't can't believe what is happening on the Friday nights already. So we still call the whole thing Psiloaska, but it's it, as much more to Psiloaska now than before because Toad Magic um, is amazing, is unbelievable, is unforeseen. When I when I got the Toads in my home, I was never seeing that. I was never seeing that. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, what, what changed actually was that from March on, you know, we got um, into another kind of houses. And then we had an, a May ceremony and a July ceremony where we celebrated six, the, the, the sixth ceremony, one year of Psilowaska. And now we are heading towards the seventh ceremony in September in a week. Uh, so next weekend, not the coming, but the afterwards. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's the seventh time. And I can tell you since the third ceremony, 
since and also since the fourth ceremony we changed so much and with every ceremony we're learning but we are really really close to perfection also because of the toad also because of the places and because of the combining of our forces Jeroen and mine so um yeah that's to answer your question yeah, yeah. well something i like to follow up on a little bit is this transition in your role and also your partner's role in facilitating these works with your clients that so previously you guys were journeying with the clients and then you made the decision that that's not what you're going to do to provide more of a grounded role as facilitators what has that transition been like for you personally what what are some of the differences the ways that you find that you're engaging in the process with your clients and what you yourself are getting out of it as a provider and as a guide yeah um to answer that question i have to first say that i never took mushrooms okay yeah because i know my little me my little ollie yeah you remember the little ollie and um, i know him and when he is not sober he's bugging me all the time with stuff <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, you know that. I mean, you smoke a joint and you go like, oh, somebody's watching me kind of, um, or maybe not. But you see, I'm, I'm getting insecure when I take drugs uh, and being with people. So mm -hmm. um, although the mushrooms and many ayahuasca, uh, this is a, a huge difference, you know. Uh, ayahuasca is always uh, coming from shamans who are themselves taking the the substance, yeah, taking the brew, yeah, and they believe in shifting energies and and all this stuff. You know, I don't. Yeah, I said that I guess in, this, in the last thing we we were calling the whole thing, by the way, as um, sp um, medicine that teaches and heals in the beginning. Yeah, the the ceremony we're called like medicine, psilocybin, medicine that teaches and heals. We erased that fully. Yeah. Because now it's, it's called spiritual awakening weekends because it's nothing to heal there. Right. And there's no medicine there because no one is sick. We just forgot and forgetting is not being sick. So that's why we changed the whole thing. And that's what is the difference between a typical ayahuasca ceremony and our thing. But Jeroen, uh, he took mushrooms and I was needing him specifically in january i needed him because the whole group was really where there was this past winter depression thing you see that right. in, in the in the you know in the midst of the winter depression is at its height with many people and so the teachings so to speak yeah or the openings of the people the the old stuff were really 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 intense yeah i'm hesitating to say dark but it was kind of like raw you know like wow it was <laughs> It was strong. So I needed him, really. And he had much mushrooms too. He didn't have a bad trip, but when you're on mushrooms, you can't be like 100%, you know. It's okay, but it's not the... You see, I needed him fully. I needed the sober Jeroen. So, right. so that that's why we found we have to be both sober. And then out of that um, yeah, idea kind of more, yeah, um, we found that in March, it is it is also getting us closer together. So like kind of, we are both totally focused, totally focused on the people we have there on the weekends. We also increase the groups. We have now 14 people there. And so we really need to be on par, you know, we need to be focused precisely on the thing. And we do it out of our hearts. That's no question asked, but you need your brain to do certain things. You see, if you have your senses uh, distort, d distorted by um, psilocin and you hear certain things different, you see certain things different, it's not helping if you're taking care of someone. And that's, this is the main reason why we see that whatever energy shifting other people think, we don't need to shift energies. Shifting of energies is happening within the group, out of themselves, out of the mushrooms, out of being together, out of being a family. And that is something I, I, I was telling you already in the last episode, in the last podcast. But it's something I can tell you some more. Because on Fridays, when people get together, there is a lot of ego stuff like, you know, I did this, I have this experience, which is beautiful. And people are getting nervous and then they start eating. And through the eating, 
uh, everyone goes like, mm, ah, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the house already, when they come to the place and they see the houses, they are like, what the fuck, you know, how can you have such houses? This is, uh, 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 this is, I can't believe I'm in a castle, you know, they're in a castle actually. And you go like, wow, are they renting these places? How could, how are you able to find this and blah, and you see all this. And then the food is like, Oli, wah, wah. And then Jeroen is designing the space. You know, this. we have certain jobs, you know. Jeroen is more making, he's hanging flags, Buddhist uh, Buddhist flags, Tibetan flags, you know. We have a big um, shipibo cloth we hang. We have now a big toad cloth we hang. We have some beautiful stuff we hang around in the space to make it ours, you know. So this is something Jeroen does. He has candles and incense and all this. You see, so we're making kind of, a ceremony out of it but it's a western ceremony and that's the main difference also we're doing western stuff here we are westerners and we're doing western stuff it's our thing it's it's new Good. Good. we are we are, we are using the ancient stuff the toads and the mushrooms but we are doing it in our world you see and the funny thing is our world and from our world part is our uh, history and history means we're having these houses with a 400 500 year old history the castile was built in the 13th century you see so it's an 800 year old house it's a, it's a castile you know it's a wow and and you see we have old frame houses old mills and yeah so um that is something what really changed the whole thing and um then the people smoke the tote together and it's I never I never was seeing that I wanted to have the toads because I love um, I love those animals and I love to have an exotic animal in my house. I had an iguana uh, years ago. I had to give it away and I wanted to have something back. And I said to my wife, hey, man, three years ago already. And she said, oh, no, no exotic animals. And I got somehow a life pushed me to get back to it last year. And I said, I want to have them. And I had the slight idea to say, hey, we can't use their magic on the weekends. Yeah. But I was never foreseeing that they get such a huge part of the whole movement. And as you know yourself, 5-methoxy is something absolutely amazing. And we are doing officially, and we can do it legally also, just like the Psilowaska, we are doing toad ceremonies in Europe. I guess we are the, the only ones. Um, I, I know Hal from your talk, your friend Hal. He's, he has the toad tem the temple mm -hmm. of the of awakening divinity. He's an amazing guy, by the way. Um, and uh, when I was listening to his podcasts, actually to the podcast with you and him, yeah, I I um, dug them up. So when I listened to him and you speaking about it, I knew I need to get the totes, you know, and then I fell in love with the whole thing. And then I tried the tote myself and I knew, and I knew immediately we need that yes. for the Friday. Yes. And you, and, and you know it. I mean, we are not giving the full breakthrough, go away to home dose, you know, never coming back dose of, of equally like 20 milligrams or so. Yeah. What we give is like, 50 to 60 milligrams of toad magic and we we sprinkle a bit of of um fairy dust on it i'm not saying what fairy dust is i guess you can imagine it okay. so yeah <laughs> uh, they call it spice the fairy dust yeah so we sprinkle a bit just to just to keep a mellow mood when the whole thing starts yeah when you smoke it and so the energy is not blowing people out of their mind immediately but but 60 milligrams of pure told magic is is not it's it's equals uh, yeah really powerful my toads but it's it equals to 15 maybe or, or 12 or something yeah so but in the group martin in the group with all people sitting silently meditate uh, uh, meditating kind of together no one is uh, Okay, they are allowed to go peeing, but you see, you know what I mean? No one is allowed to, to leave this group. There's a circle. The energy is bonding from everyone together in the round. And people are smoking this stuff one by one. Everyone, you know, you know what I'm talking about, I guess. Yeah, so, and, uh, well, let me ask you, in, yeah. in smoking it one by one, is, is every person 
taking a full and complete turn? We'll say one person smokes and then they have their experience and then you move on to the next one. Or is it one person smokes immediately passes it to the next person? No, no, person? no, 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 no. Yeah. So no, let's this, talk about the practicalities yeah, of how that's working. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, no, we are doing a therapeutic weekend there. We are doing therapeutic work with entheogens, with sacraments, like I, I love to call them. Yeah. So this is all therapeutic means. Two, two caretakers take care of the person being having the experience. Yeah. So we, someone is always the first. Mm -hmm. Some people say, oh, no, not the first. And, but someone is always the first. So first, the first one comes and it's all silence. We have Brian Eno music playing. We have incense. We have dim light. And then the pipe is prepared by me. I usually do the sacraments stuff being around doing them the preparing mushrooms and mm -hmm. peganum and preparing the toad pipe so we use a pipe and we layer the toad in between of herbs usual herbs surely no marijuana no drugs allowed on our weekends we found that so no it's only caffeine and nicotine allowed on our weekends so you know the the herbs i'm talking about is oregano yeah. yeah. So okay. we, we we sprinkle some oregano, then layer the the secretion of the toad, the pure secretion of the toad, then some fairy dust, then some oregano. Yeah. So the the stuff is burned. Yeah. Yeah. And in a in a in a usually small pipe. So um, people breathe. You know, we we talked. We we make an opening talk before all this. Sure. So everyone knows what he's going into. So people breathe and then they smoke and then they have the experience and after 20, 25 minutes, they're totally fully back, still radiating in love, you know that, yeah. uh, and sit to their, sit back to their place and we have another one doing the same thing again till the whole group is finished, 14 people, yeah? So that means we are finished around 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning, but that doesn't matter because on Saturday everyone can sleep uh, as long as they wish because the psilocybin starts very late in the evening so um actually some people fall a bit kind of in a in a half sleep mode during the night but many many people most of the people are precisely sharp there till four o'clock in the morning it's amazing because the energy of the one smoking goes yeah. into the group yeah it goes to the group it's in the group but it's in the in the space you've asked me what it changed for me um the whole thing i can tell you I'm on 24, three days when I'm doing the ceremonies. Jeroen is on 24, three days during the ceremonies. And on means we are fully of, full of love. We are, not having, uh, we are not having visualizations, hallucinations or anything. We are totally sober, but totally fully on love. Beautiful. So that's, and that is amazing. You see, how can I ever pay that back to the people? I'm, 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 I'm so, I have tears in my eyes as well as everyone else. And it's amazing. It's so amazing what I get out of these weekends. It's not about money. It's not about, you see, it's, it's all about giving this further, what God, what the source, what you see, what life showed me from the beginning. It was like that, but we perfected it and we're really and it's a, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what is shifted on these weekends. And when the Friday night goes to an end, when everyone smoked, yeah, people are screaming, uh, crying, not screaming, crying and having each other in their arms. And it's already everyone feels family. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine, you can imagine what then starts Saturday morning. Out of that experience, the Friday night, the Saturday morning is waking up with family and we do a walk outside in the nature as family and we talk as family and we hug each other on Saturday morning as family. The toad changes from coming together as interested strangers to a family in one night and that is something I was never foreseeing that and I'm so thankful for that. And, and that is because the toad is pure love 
everyone who did testimonials or who talked about it afterwards, it's the only words they can find is it's pure love. It's pure love. The toad loves us. The toad is pure love and bringing out the love in us. It's like kind of you're going to the guru and the guru brings out the love in yourself. Like, like Marachi did in Ramdas. And the toad, I mean, look at the toad. The toad looks like Marachi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are, they are Buddhas, they are little Buddhas, they are little Buddha animals. And they are so amazing. These animals are so wise, so calm. You, you see, I have them and they step on each other and never being aggressive. I never saw a toad being in any way aggressive. I mean, sure, they eat living insects, but with love. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really they they never have been in any way aggressive. They you, they're so amazing. They sit on top of each other's head, and they stay like this for five minutes, and then slowly the 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 below one moves away or or you know slips over to the right, and then they and they they sit on on top of each other and they. They hug each other constantly. It's like, it's amazing animals. And this is, they have, I mean, they are 24 seven on five meal. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so to speak. So that it's amazing. And this love is transported into us humans and it's not transported. It's releasing this love in us yeah. humans. So, uh, that's why the toad is something so special on our weekends. And we have people They say, I don't know about the toad. I read Oroch's book and he's telling about like ego ass kicker and stuff. I never had someone. I mean, we have people go into the toad and they scream and they shout and they throw themselves around. And you see, but we are sitting there as guides, kissing, hugging, touching them. And afterwards, everyone is smiling. They are smiling. They are having tears of joy in their, in their faces because it had to be to get out it had to yes. finally get out so it was amazing last time in july we had a a us citizen she was coming uh, from america to her son who lives in germany he was a citizen as well first us citizens in our ceremonies by the way um and we have in, in november a us citizen coming Yeah, um, a person from your states, yeah, an American. He's coming uh, only for the ceremonies, meaning he's flying all the way. He's paying for all of this only to come to Psalaska. So I thank you so much for, you know, this vehicle here sharing. And people are coming from your country to our country just to have this experience. Excellent. And it's amazing. Thank you very much for all of it. And it's wow. And this Just to finish the story, this um, this uh, uh, woman, she is doing herself. Um, yeah, I don't know how it's called, but it's it's this counseling, this uh, life uh, thing. This um, I don't know how she calls it. It's this, it's a method, you know, of shifting energies without uh, sacraments, yeah, without the theogens, but but just asking questions and you know i guess you know uh, it it's it's not psyche it's something similar uh, or something yeah and she never was able to do it on herself and then the toad came and did it for her yes and it's something everyone was crying about that her son was crying and it was so amazing to experience this to to be with these people and to share all that and i'm so thankful for having that and so that's why I'm here, you know, talking to you, just yeah. to share all this. And we have the chance, and I'm so thankful for that. We have the ch chance to do this freely, openly in the in the Netherlands. And it's not restricted. We don't have to fear the police. It's so beautiful. Okay. Well, so something I just wanted to um, kind of wrap up with you is... Um, Something that I've really emphasized a lot on this show and in my own writings and, and things like that is that 5-MeO-DMT, the, the toad medicine, is mm -hmm. such a profound experience that there really isn't anything that's comparable. And sometimes, you know, a lot of people who haven't 
had the opportunity to work with that find that a little unbelievable like people who have worked a lot with ayahuasca or they've experienced dmt or, or, or a huge lsd trip or something mm-hmm. and they think well that just can't be true but just so so many of us who have experienced it really want to put it into its own category that it, it is so amazing mm-hmm. it is so powerful that it really deserves special treatment in some respect and i'm just wondering if mm-hmm. um People who have come to your ceremonies, if they have come away with a similar sense of the toad medicine, or, or how would you rate their experience? How do you feel that they feel about it? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, there's there has been some writing about meanwhile about five meo. Yeah, you know that as um, mostly this Auroch book, and I. Actually, give around a copy of it uh, with uh, the the ceremony PDF we give around for the to the people uh, when the whole thing starts, so they can read themselves into Five Mio because it's still something uncommon, yeah, yes. officially. Just like you said, um, I mean, there's a lot of ayahuasca. We, we, we had that in the last talk, and I don't see now. But uh, Five Mio is something like it's still is officially. No one talks about the toad, yeah? So they're all talking about synthetic 5 Mio, and it is something people have different difficulties with, yeah? So uh, since it's banned 5-methoxy uh, DMT, it's also something which got out of the public a bit. But uh, as um, Ralph Metzner with, with the Jaguar book, which we're also um, ha- handing around to uh, for reading to the people, um, is, is already saying that it's, uh, it has this therapeutic, uh, therapeutical uh, value, and that it's an amazing substance, uh, although it's uh, synthetic. Yeah, but uh, since this compound is just a copy of the natural um, compound, for, for, so 5-methoxy DMT wasn't man-made; it's just synthesized. Yeah. Yeah. And or originating from the toad and from the plants. So um, it is a pure compound, so so to speak. I've been experimenting with uh, metoxetamine. I was telling you that uh, in forehand. So metoxetamine is a pure chemical compound. Yeah, still it has a metoxy group on the, uh, bonded on it. So it has kind of a metoxy magic in it, but it's still it's something purely chemical. It was invented by a mind and not by nature. So. Uh, still people have this, yeah, this pre-thoughts about a synthetic substance, but we are using the toad. So people are coming to us and um, experiencing nature. And although Auroch is mentioning the toad as well, and he has a beautiful, ex- uh, um, I guess it's it's the most precious experience overall. He is describing in his book. It's in the last chapters, in the in the extra chapters. It's in seven or eight. He has in this book fifteen extra chapters in the end of the book. Yeah. I don't call, I don't I don't know how it's called. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, appendices. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. That was the word. So, in the seventh or eighth or something, he describes a toad uh, exp- uh, experience he had, and then he says, "I still was able to feel my body in the in the chair, but it was the most amazing experience I've ever had with the five meal." So, um, being with the toad, uh, having smoked the toad, and that is something. Um, yeah, the toad is not only five meo. Also, it's it's the toad. The toad is the toad. So uh, people can fall when they experience it on our weekends more easily into love with the whole magic of the five methoxy DMT because it is the toad. It's not the five methoxy DMT. It's the toad they're experiencing. So I mean, I show pictures and people know pictures of the toad. So look at those animals. How can something coming from them be bad? As no, in no way it it could be. So yeah, look at them, and uh, so so that that is why people have a kind of a love relationship in forehand when smoking five methoxy DMT, even if they have read the Oric chapters of oh I lost you know I I got to the source I left everything behind and all this you see. People have a very strong toad experience on our weekends, but they don't have a 25, 20 milligrams 5-methoxy DMT experience. That is, that is something we can't offer. 
Yeah, because the toads give as much as they can. I can't over milk them. They're animals. Yeah. So, yeah, we have this dose, and the dose is very strong, and it is teaching and or teaching healing, whatever. Yeah. So I'm I hesitating to use these terms, but um, it is opening a lot. And it's washing away old stuff a lot. And it's helping the whole weekend to get further into the process because that's the other thing. You know it from the first talk. Psiloasca is something which, because people don't know about it, can't uh, really foresee how strong it is. Right. Yeah, I still can advise you to do it if you haven't. And other people also, if they are in a secure place and can do it, uh, especially if they have experienced a lot of the other stuff in Marx, yeah, of ayahuasca and mescaline or whatever. But um, because ayahuasca can be a very amazingly strong thing, and we dose everyone specifically on the person and on their experience with the toads, and we talk a lot about dosage before we give the dosage. And not, no dosage is written in stone, you know, People can say up to the moment they have the mug in their hand with the with the material in it, they can say, oh, I'm taking less more or whatever. So um, having the toad as the first step for the psilowaska is something also very amazing. But both, I mean, you know the picture that the toad is sitting on the toad stool yeah, on the mushroom. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, it's ancient, you know. So there is a combination with these both for a reason. So we are getting back to that, I guess. You know, not we, we were we're not we weren't searching for it, it just came to us. So that's so that's so sweet with it. And to answer your the question fully, when people come back from the toad, it's like I already said, it's all about love. The only thing, the only words they can find for it is love. It's it's getting back home. It's um, finding the love in themselves. And someone who has smoked 5-methoxy-DMT or told knows it is a, it is so powerful and so such an intense force coming over you. You're washed away by this force. But when you go with the force when you let go of the resistance to that force which is so strong you can't resist then you you'll be washed away home you're washed away into into what you fully are you're you're in like you it's like diving into diving into existence diving into milky way diving into the into a river dying into the in you know into the stream and that is something um which you can't transport with any other substance yes i never experienced that with any other substance yeah it's, um, it's something i would want to emphasize yeah. is that there there definitely is a qualitative difference between the full release dose and a sub-release dose with 5-MeO DMT but even a sub-release dose even a small dose is still so incredibly powerful that it's just leaps and bounds beyond most people's experience of what yeah. that they might have even with with other medicines and also something i would want to emphasize and just kind of curious if you've had any reports on this is that many people have reported to me that after the introduction with 5-MeO DMT that any other subsequent medicine experience or even meditation or sexual experience or spontaneous yeah. opening that they might have is far more deeper and profound than it was prior that, to the introduction with 5-MeO. Is that something yeah. that your clients have been reporting as well? Um, so far as I know, yes. Um, it's... Uh, Specifically, I can. I, I'm seeing it uh, about the psilocybin, and I mean, we had, for example, in July. Yeah, July in the midst of summer, we were in a house. It was a um, a fortress kind of house. Yeah, it was a house with a big, large wall around it. A very old house with an old ruin with it. It was an amazing place. We we could we were able to shut the door and all the f and all the 16 people we were were in this enclosure of and on the top of 
of a hill. It was like, wow, the space was all also amazing. So at that spot, we, we smoked the toad and the smoke uh, and, the, and the toad did so much magic on every single one of us, you know, even on us having not smoked any toad. Yeah. But uh, everyone was deeply, deeply, deeply into love. And it was a lot of opening. And I have to say that again, um, we are not giving um, no release dosages. We are, we are, we are, we are giving, um, I, I'd say we are giving uh, medium to strong dosages, mm -hmm. but what we are not giving kick-ass dosages. So if someone is not releasing from this dose, it's not because he couldn't, he couldn't because of the dosage, it's more that he, uh, that it wasn't ripe for him. And that's in July, everyone was ripe, kind of, yeah. I don't know. We, we had 14 people having the full release experience, kind of, yeah, and hadn't, having had intense experience, I, wow, uh, wow, it was amazing. And, and then again, on Saturday, the mushroom turned out to be weak, yeah, the, the, I'm, the, the mushroom weren't weak, yeah, it was the same mushrooms as ever. Uh, And it was just amazing that the mushroom couldn't do much work anymore because the toad already did so much. Right. And so the Saturday, the Saturday was much more kind of like a, a gentle, uh, a gentle path home. It was not like kicking anyone's butt like it had uh, in previous, uh, on previous weekends with some people. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And, and everyone was like, um, we were, we were giving, um, uh, we were redosing people the first time, the first time ever on Psilowaska, we were redosing people because everyone said like, it's not working really. And we were redosing them. And we had many people that, uh, that uh, then broke free and that on uh, after the redose. And we had some people who uh, realized that just waiting for something like on Friday was has was keeping them holding them back from the mushrooms right. so so they were waiting for the Friday experience not seeing what they had from the mushroom on the Saturday night <laughs> so 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 far about the magic and the power of five me or of the toad and um, well, yeah it, it's fascinating because I do find that particularly when people are doing a series of sessions with medicine or multiple rounds of a medicine, that there's always a natural arc to someone's experience. So let's say someone is going, is planning on doing three rounds of five MEO. And if in that very first round, if they get their big release and they go through their screaming or their purging mm -hmm. or their crying or whatever it is that they need to go through, you can give them the same level of dose for rounds two and three, and not much will happen because just as you're describing here, what that person mm. needs to go through has already happened. And, yeah, yeah. And and just upping the dosage and giving them more is not necessarily going to produce the same effect because everyone's holding a certain amount of tension and a certain amount of blockage of energy. And once that gets released, that's kind of the work that needs to be done. And so then anything after that is just, it's kind of like a bonus. It's, it's mm. not really engaging in the work. Now, if that person were to then wait a week or two weeks or however long and then reestablish those blocks or those holdings of energy, then they can go through that process again. But it's important always to respect that natural arc that if someone has done the work that they need to do, then yeah. seeking after that again is, is going to be fruitless because it, it's already happened. And so it sounds like maybe that's a little bit of how the toad medicine is working in your sessions, that it, it's so powerful that it's helping to blow people out initially. And so then maybe the, the psilawaska is a little bit gentler, or it seems a little bit milder. Yeah, it depends. Um, uh, on, in July, uh, in, in May, we had, we had strong psilawaska as well, but we had strong egos there. Yeah. So they had the experience with the toad, but they needed more. We had four or five, or I guess it was six people. We had the half of the group that we have this returner policy. So returners are always present on the, on the groups, yeah, on the weekends. So we have five, max six people coming back for a ceremony for a weekend. And um, so about mostly these people are 
uh, old dogs, you know, they, they know it and they, you never have problems with them, yeah? Uh, most of them, yeah? Some some need a second time, but you see. And um, then, we, uh, the, then we had the newbies and from newbies, you never know how they are reacting to the toad and how will they be with the mushrooms. And you find out during the weekend how much they need. And from the stories they they told me in in uh, told us in the in the emails beforehand, mm -hmm. and um, in May it was like we had strong toad experiences, but uh, the the shortage of the experience was not enough for the people to totally break through. So on Saturday they took those five or six people. They took the mushrooms and were running around for two or three hours. So usually you go after the second hour, you lie down with, with a strong dose, and it was really strong dosages we gave then, uh, of Suraska. But in that case, people were trying to trying to, to stay grounded in their ego. The ego wasn't, you know, letting go. Right. And, then the, and then the fifth and the sixth hour totally broke them free. Uh, start yes, not not the, the not the fifth, the, the fourth. From the fourth to the sixth hour, those particular six people were not uh, speaking a single word anymore. <laughs> so uh, it was delayed, and and in that case, you can always see it. This is it's a strong holding holding on, uh, yeah, a strong holding ego kind of yeah. And um, and in that case, the mushrooms were needed. So, uh, and that's so amazing. We have always, there are all, always unforeseen things happening, and that is so good. And in that same ceremony in May, we had a we had a person who took uh, diazepam prior to the weekend and on the weekend. So guess what? She wasn't letting go, and she had an intense suffering experience with the toad. Yeah, a, a prolonged suffering, and also on Saturday with the uh, with the mushrooms, but she was the only one. And afterwards, we found that she was, you know, she was honestly then telling us that she used diazepam on that weekend. So um, since then, we have the harsh policy that yeah, again and again we say no drugs allowed on the weekends. Please be honest about that. Yeah. Um, because we are we are not having a script uh, being signed, you know. We're not signing. We're not letting sign anything from the people because we believe, God knows best. You know, it's all right. We can tr trust. Is important. But after that experience, you know, we were going like, oh man, we are. You know, we are taking care of these people. We are kind of responsible for them. So it is a, you know, is a difficult thing. But funnily, life decided to give her her treatment, in having have having had the experience. So you know, like resisting towards the, the toad and the mushroom. But in the end, she was realizing that after a week when she finally um, was getting away from the drug, from the diazepam, yeah, she was seeing that, uh, hey, wow, what happened that weekend? And so the, the, the uh, magic came through, just, it just took her longer. But on that weekend, it was not easy for her and for us too. You know, you have to pamper a person who is constantly resisting a substance which is active for nine hours. Yeah. You can imagine what happened. Yeah. So, Exhausting. Um, yeah, he's really a man. But um, that's good that we are two. So when my, when my nerves and energy is depleted, you know, Jeroen jumps in and other way around. So, and he's also more gentle. Uh, at some point, I was the one saying, so come on, get up, get to the window, breath some fresh air. It's enough suffering now. It's enough now. You know, and I'm the one saying that more, and it was good. It was, and then what I, that's what I'm saying. We're all doing this hand in hand. It's all a living organism. The whole thing is living, and uh, just as living as the toad magic is, and the mushroom are, and it's all we are all living beings, and it's all around love, and it's floating, and that's so important. And um, I'm, yeah, again, I can say we're so thankful for for being allowed to do this for. Um, for being allowed to offer this and to share all this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, um, go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, I was thinking what was the last, <laughs> the, the questions you actually asked. It's, uh, uh, yeah. Um, pe people are amazed by the toad. Overall, I can say that. And, 
uh, it's like you've always, uh, always said, the toad, the five meal is something very unusual, is something unique, is something non-describable, and is something uh, changing you forever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ali, it's great to touch base with you and, and reconnect and just hear about the wonderful work that you're doing over there in the Netherlands. It really sounds fantastic. So let's maybe close it up with uh, letting people know how they might be able to get in touch with you and participate in one of your ceremonies if they are so interested. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the data is psiloasca.com. Uh, uh, I am not good in spelling. So uh, it, it's P S I L O H U A S C A.com. <laughs> and um, there is everything you need to know. And uh, if you want to book a weekend with us, we have six weekends for the next year already pre. Uh, pre-booked the houses are pre-booked so the dates are fixed and um, yeah come come on in I mean I'm honest with all of you with uh, you know it uh, we need people to come to us uh, the the renaissance of uh, of uh, psychedelics is kind of a bit in a slow motion in the moment I hear it from other people making ceremonies you know, <laughs> we had a we had a renaissance of uh, psychedelics, uh, of of sacraments, and uh, now it's kind of ma many people maybe in a waiting line. So we are just waiting for you, and you will ask your heart, and you will feel it's really cheap. Overall, you only have to pay two hundred euro, which is kind of a, a joke for three days of f uh, of uh, full. Uh, food in a place you you alone would pay much more. We, we are splitting the costs of the houses and of the food and we get some some little um, money out for our work also meanwhile so from from next year on it's 200 euro this year is all fully booked but uh, we have six dates for next year and we would love to have you and uh, you can go on the website there's much more information there and um, we are answering all your questions we also and that is unique i have to tell that maybe um, we are taking care of your travel to us. So usually you go like you book a thing and you go there and how you go there is your thing. But we take care of you. So if you need a place maybe for Wednesday, uh, for Thursday or for Sunday for a prolonged stay, we are there. We can offer you a place, search a place or mostly people are sleeping at Jeroen's or my place. That doesn't mean we have space for five or ten people, but usually also on Sunday, people who are with you together, other participants are offering you a bed. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, family. You know, people grow together as a family. And on Sunday, everyone wants to share everything with others. So it's uh, it's uh, often happening that people take other people home or to the airport or, you know, all these things. And um uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I said it all. Um, just come to us. Um, as Jeroen and I would say, that um, our weekends is the perfect method to experience a sacrament in the most safest uh, surrounding. Uh, yeah, with uh, intense um, possibilities because we have this two very, very powerful and unique um sacraments we are offering on our weekends you can't find them anywhere else and i'm not against anything else i'm with anything else it's ayahuasca has its place and we have our place too and i would love to have you on our weekends thank you so much martin for giving us the space again for giving uh for, for also you're you're so unique in letting me speak so much and I was really, I am, my little ego is telling me, you did good today. <laughs> my little Ollie said, there was much good English there, better than last time, Ollie. And it was something I wanted to change from last time because my English is getting better from the weekends also. So I'm, you see, it's getting to be my second language. And uh, I'm really, I'm happy, you know, that we came back together. One year is gone. And uh, it's so amazing that life is teaching and that life is letting us learn and that life is letting us evolve. And 
Thank you, thank you, thank you so endlessly much for what you are doing also, all the work you're doing. And yeah, I bow to you and I just thank you so endlessly much. And thank you everyone for listening to this thing here. And I hope we see each other. You are also invited, Martin. I would love to have you here thank with you. the whole family. With the whole family. We have a big house here privately. I know. Just come over, you know, if you ever want to see Europe or at least Germany, it's come over and yeah. Beautiful. Thank well, you. Well, thank you yeah. so much. It's been great having Nothing you back on the show yeah. and keep yeah. up the great work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And bye bye and kisses. Yeah. Okay.
Thank you.